Hi, my name is Daniel Ford. I have a PhD in molecular biology, and I've taught microbiology at three different colleges. My plan for this video series is to teach you the basics of microbiology. When I've finished, it should cover all the material students learn in a college-level microbiology class. But you shouldn't worry if you don't know anything about biology, or even if you've never taken a science class. The nice thing about biology is that most of it can be understood with just a little background knowledge. And I'll be explaining everything you need to understand microbiology as we go along. For this first video, I want to explain what microbiology is and why it matters. To begin, take a look at the safety pin. Like most pins, it's pretty sharp. And if we magnified it by a bit, we'd see that it still looks fairly sharp. But let's say that we magnified this pin by a lot. Let's say that we magnified it by, oh, a little over a thousand times. In this case, you can see that the pin actually doesn't look sharp at all. Instead, it looks like a little plateau. You'll also notice that the picture of the pin is in black and white now. That's because it's been magnified with a type of microscope called an electron microscope. Electron microscopes have fantastic magnification, but unfortunately they can't take color pictures. The final thing you'll notice is that there are bacteria all over the surface of the pin. It's a little hard to see them like this, so let's artificially color in the picture there. Now you can see the bacteria more easily. Bacteria are part of a group of organisms we biologists refer to as microorganisms, or microbes for short. This is a bit of an oversimplification, but any organism you need a microscope to see is a microbe. We call the study of these creatures microbiology. Now, you may be asking yourself, why the hell should I waste time learning about things I can't even see? After all, I made it this far through life without knowing anything about them, and things have worked out pretty well so far. And that's a reasonable question. So what I'm going to do with the rest of this video is give you a few reasons why microbes are important and why you should care about them. Because if you don't know anything about microbiology, then you're missing out on a fundamental aspect of how the world works. So one reason you should care about microbes is that they can kill you. This is smallpox. It's caused by a virus, which is another type of microbe, and it's arguably the worst microbial infection within the history of the human species. It has a very high mortality rate, and people who survive it are often scarred for life. Thanks to vaccination, it's been eradicated. But there are still a few samples of the virus left, and one day they could be used in a bioterrorism attack. And there are many microbial diseases that survive to this day, like the bubonic plague that wiped out a third of Europe's population in the 1300s. But even though some microbes can kill you, the vast majority of microbes are not harmful to humans. In fact, far less than 1% of microbes can cause disease in a healthy human. The others are just minding their own business. And you know what? You've probably killed more microbes in your life than microbes have killed humans in the history of our species. Every time you cook food, every time you use antibacterial soap, every time you clean an area with disinfectants, you're killing microbes. If they had any sort of rational capacity, they'd be out protesting you on the streets right now. Not that you'd notice, since they're microscopic and you can't see them in the first place, but you get the idea. Now you might say to yourself, I don't care that only a few of these things can cause disease. Let's sterilize them all and let God sort them out. Even if we set aside the logistical impossibility of that little plan, it would still be a terrible idea, because it turns out that microbes are essential for human health and flourishing. For example, there are beneficial bacteria living in your large intestine. They produce vitamins for you and keep disease-causing bacteria from growing in that region of your body. And microbes are essential for human life in other ways as well. The majority of the oxygen we breathe is not made by plants. Instead, microbes like the algae growing in this pond are responsible for 70% of the oxygen production on the planet. Without them, you and most of the life you see around you could not exist. However, there are reasons to care about microbes that have nothing to do with human health or our survival as a species. Some microbes are used to make food. For example, yeast is a microbe. Bakers use it to bake bread, and brewers use it to produce alcoholic beverages. Other microbes can make cheese from dairy products. So remember that a world without microbes would be a world without pizza and beer. Microbes are also interesting for reasons that have nothing to do with us. Some microbes can live in incredibly harsh environments that would kill us in seconds. For example, there's an underground volcano beneath Yellowstone National Park that causes some of its underground springs to release water and form thermal pools. You can see that the pool here is so hot, steam is coming off of it. And the runoff that has formed a small stream is just below the boiling point. 
Despite this, there are microbes that can survive in the runoff, which are responsible for the red and yellow colors you see here. We call these organisms extremophiles, because they're specialized to live in extreme environments. These particular extremophiles can survive in acid or very high temperatures. But there are others that live in temperatures just above freezing or in high salt concentrations. So hopefully I've managed to convince you that microbes are important and worth learning about. My plan for this video series is to cover all the material you would normally encounter in an introductory college microbiology class, with the occasional digression to discuss medically important disease-causing microbes and other interesting topics in microbiology.